Glory to God. Drinking some tea. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I'm going to finish part two. Hallelujah. My heart is, is sad because the family's got to grieve. And, and, and like I said, I see it. It's, it's happening regular now. Like ain't nothing to it. I talked to some uh, couple women. I talked to someone and they said, you know what? Don't nothing even bother me anymore because I don't got so you don't got so immune to people getting killed and you just content with it. Something is wrong. People don't even believe that there's a God and he's coming back. Many people don't believe that he's coming back. Many people don't believe that there's a God. They go to church every Sunday. They believe, but they don't, they're not gonna live this thing. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to leave a legacy for this next generation. I'm I know God brought me here to speak out. <clears throat> He's using me as a messenger to speak out and let the young people know that is not the way of God. That's not his will for a man to put his hands on a woman and kill her. And that is not God's will for a woman to put her hands on a man to kill, take his life. That's not the will of God, my friend. If Jesus died on that cavalry for you and me, that was love right there. He took the nail prints for you. He took the nail prints for me and whoever, uh, uh, each of us are on the face of this earth. That was love. And he, all he asks us to do is love one another, each other. Love him first and love each other. The greatest command. And we, and, 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 and we can't do that. God, help that family. Help that family that's grieving. Hallelujah. Help the family that's grieving. Amen, amen. And I, I want to come to you with uh, some of the things I went through in an abusive relationship. The abuse is real. The struggle is real. I want to share my testimony. One of them. Like I said, I've been married before. And I had to run for my life. I have three children. I had three children out of wedlock. Trying to find myself in life. Doing the best I can do. A little girl didn't have a whole lot of wisdom at that time. Trying to find my identity. Why do I exist in the earth? So sometimes we get in relationships that's toxic for us. But all we want <clears throat> is to be loved. We, we're looking for love all in the wrong places. Well, to make a long story short, We were living together. We wasn't married. And the word of God declares marriage is honorable and the bed is under fire. He said, if you're going to come to, you're supposed to marry. But I didn't have nothing but limited knowledge at that time. And all of a sudden, everything started going downhill. Things were looking good at first and everything just started going downhill. I started making a lot of foolish turns in life. I made mistakes. And one day, um, I know I was, you know, the father put his hands on me. I was going to beauty school at that time. Going to school, trying to better myself, educate myself. 
because I always wanted to be somebody. You know, I played basketball in Poor Gibson, Mississippi. I was the most valuable player. I'm not trying to be brag or anything. And my dream was to go to the uh, women NBA and play basketball. That was my dream. But the devil interfered with my life, and I lost that dream. But I didn't let it stop me. So after moving to uh, Houston, Texas, I, I got in made mistakes. Then I said, I need to try to educate myself. I done made mistakes. I got children out of wedlock. Loved them. I took care of them, too. You know, I loved them. I fed them. I clothed them. I took care of them. And so the dad was going fishing and going hanging out with his homeboys all the time come back in, we fight. You know, you're looking at a woman that God have uh, put his hands on me, done, done healed me, still healing me. I was broken. I was bruised. And it's a cycle because if you've been hurt as a child, you're going to continue to carry that, that, that hurt and pain on into whatever, you know, relationship. That's why you have to come away from relationships and get healed. Well, after staying in the relationship, I began to see things that wasn't of God. And I'm trying to study the Bible and everything else. And I, it got worse. And I said, God, I don't want to be like this here. I want to raise my children in a righteous atmosphere. So one day I cried out to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I want to be delivered out of this. I would go to beauty school, had to wear shades because I had purple eyes. Yeah, you're you, you, you looking at a lady been through domestic abuse. Yes, and I'm not ashamed. I'm open. I'm naked before you. Not naked. like neck. I'm, I'm sharing my scars, my wounds, because I'm a healed woman now. God is still healing me, working on all, all of each of us. But I'm preaching the gospel now because he done healed me from those things and delivered me from those things and still healing. Every woman still got to be healed from different things going on. And I would go to beauty school. They said, what's wrong? Why are you wearing shades in the school? I said, I don't know. My dream, it was a passion that I got to finish beauty school. Oh, God. And I did graduate. I'm still a licensed hairstylist for the state of Texas now. Glory to God. But I had to figure out a way to get out that relationship, that abusive relationship. And God allowed me to run into some friends, some people that I didn't have a clue. I, I call them my angels because, you know, most time you have a... If you believe that and God have a purpose for you and you want to do his will, he'll make a way for you. He allowed me to meet some people. That was my 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 way to jump up out, get out, get out of that relationship. So my children's father went to out that day fishing, going to do what he normally do. I packed up. They said, you need to get out of that relationship. We're going to help you. I said, okay. They came over. We got black bags. We dumped everything in the bags. They had a truck waiting for me to come out of this his stuff. God, God is so amazing. He allowed these people to help me. So God hid me out for six months away from this abusive man. Glory to God. When he came back home, the house was empty. I kept my children, you know, I was in daycare, going to beauty school, but I couldn't bring the kids to daycare because he would know where to find my children. So I had to be smart. That's what I'm telling you ladies right now. It's a way you can do it. And if you call on Jesus Christ, he will help you out of that situation. Well, God saved me. He moved me out of it. I said, I'm through with it, God. I'm finished with it. I hit, God hit me out for six months until I was strong enough to face that man and let him know enough was enough. He strengthened me, kept me hid away. 
and the babies. And they was they were growing. And when I finally was strong enough to go and face this giant, I stood before him and told him, I'm not the same person anymore. And you're not finna put your hands on me no more. God separated. I was strong enough to tell him. Because men think that they can. <laughs> and I've seen women do some bad things to men too. Don't think this is just about men. I, my, I have a book about all of this that I'm speaking about. I'm trying to get published. I'll get it published, Lord's willing, soon. It, I got to get it edited. I got to get a publisher, a good publisher. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we proceeded on. I moved on with my life. And that's when I got full time into church. Started seeking the face of God, brought my children to church. We had some good mothers over there off in, in Houston, Texas at the time. Those mothers grabbed me and my babies and loved on us and loved us. God, that's when my life transformed. He transformed my life with the love of those old mothers. But they don't have mothers like that. You don't see too many mothers like that in the church now. And that helped me. God helped me. He helped me along the way. And I done had some more stories, some more things that I got myself in, but he helped me. And I knew how to get out of them. When I see the red flags, I'm running. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I said all of that to say this. I survived domestic abuse. God helped me to realize that I had a mission telling my story from the victim to the survivor to better assist in the war on domestic violence. I'm here to break the silence. Many times I kept quiet because I didn't want everybody in my business. And that's where the enemy traps you at right there. Try to work things out. You can try to work it out all you want to. You can. And I encourage you to work your if you're in a marriage relation. But when a man put his hands on you the first time, that's it. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. If he start cursing you and calling you out of your name, or vice versa, woman, that's a no-no. It's time to leave. It's time to bounce. It's time to bounce. Glory be to God. But he left me here to tell my story. And I'm partially sharing some of it because I see domestic violence. It's just, it's a, uh, it, it seems like it's just, it's a rapid thing. It's just constantly happening now. And I don't see too many people speaking out on domestic violence. I'm here to speak out. My sister, if you're in a, a domestic violence situation, it's time for you to bounce. It's time for you to pack your bags and go. I, I, I don't know who hearing me under the sound of my voice. You may be in Africa. You may be in the U.S. You may be in, in um, Switzerland. You may be in uh, wherever you're at around the world. Hawaii, Las Vegas, wherever you're at, it'll never get better. Because if they hit you the first time, they're going to hit you again. Glory be to God. And I've been in some more things, but God healed me and snatched me out of it. And my eyes open, said, no, no, they didn't. Oh, when I, when I look like, I said, oh, that's it. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, thou shalt not have no other God before me. Thou shalt not. Don't put your mama over God. Don't put your husband over God. Don't put your wife over God. Don't put your job over, over God. Don't put your money over God. Don't put your children as trophies over God. For God is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He shall have no other God before him. God's before him. You don't worship nothing over God. Because you will lose it, my friend. Hallelujah. He said, I will not 
You will not have nothing before me. Glory be to God. So this couple and many other couples, they're supposed to have God first. That wife next or that husband next. If you have God first, he can speak in your ear. He can speak in your ear, your ear in here. He will speak to you and tell you what to do. He'll tell you that don't look good. He Many times he tell me, no, don't touch that. Let that go. If you have an ear to hear what thus says the Lord, some of some of us can escape some of this stuff and, and, and avoid getting into the trap that we've gotten in. But did you hear what Miles Monroe said in the book? Your job, your retirement, all of these things, all of that. When you put these things above God, you're making a huge mistake. The couple, the married couple, the wife and the husband that's in Florida, he killed his wife in the church, the first lady. She had signs. She seen a lot of signs. Why didn't she leave? Why didn't she leave the relationship? I've walked out of relationships that had money, that had cars, and you name it. I walked out. I did this here. I got to step out a minute. <laughs> And I never showed back up. God first, there will be, there should be no other God before me, said the Lord thy God. If she knew these things was happening, my problem was it was time for her to make her way escape. Expose darkness. That's what Jesus says. He said, we're here to expose it. We're not to take part of darkness. Ephesians 5.11 declares, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. God is a God. He said, what's done in the light shall come Dark, done in the dark will come to the light. If you marry and you become one, wife, why? It's time for us to stand up and be who we need to be because we see what's going on. God ain't playing with foolishness anymore. Don't go along with your husband when you know he sleeping around. You know he robbing the people in the church. You know he doing wrong, sleeping around. Walk away from that. Ask God for strength to do it. He'll help you, my friend. He helped me through devastation. I call out on him. I call out. I said, Jesus, just like Brian Bartomeu, help me with this. Help me out of this relationship. I done got trapped. He will help you, my friend. He will come to your rescue. Just call on Jesus. You can't call on Buddha. You can't call on Confucius. You can't, can't call on the moon god. You can't call on Krista. You can't call on the other gods. They're not going to hear you. But if you call on Jesus, he'll hear you. He'll come to your rescue, my friend. It saddens me. I'm so sad. I'm not talking about the, uh, the wife. But I wished that she would have spoke up on that husband that was cheating and running around on him. It's too late now. God ain't playing in these hours, I'm telling you. If you're in a relationship with an abusive man, whether he in the pulpit, in a preacher, whether he apostle, whether he a prophet, evangelist, pastor, uh, a leader, a worship leader, whoever he is, if you caught up in something like that, it's time for you to step down. He said, expose darkness. I'm not going to participate in darkness. I'm not going to participate. My husband, I'm going to do it this way. I, go ahead on. 
I said, but you know what? In the end, if you keep doing what you're doing, God going to move you. And he moved him. The husband I was married to. I'm not going to tolerate it. I love God first. And when you married me, it was God Almighty. And, and when I when I go out of this place, this earth, it's going to be God. Now, if you want to come in and think you finna change my relationship, you better hit the door. They say hit the door where the good Lord split you. They used to say that. Hallelujah. I know this ain't no message where you can laugh and I, uh, cracking jokes and all this. But this is serious business here. You got a legacy, a, a, a generation looking in at this type of stuff and nobody speaking out. But a few of us, few selective of us, I don't want him to come and say, hey, you wouldn't speak out. I'm going to let the rock speak out on your behalf. You know, he don't wait for nobody. You either going to do what God said do or you not. He'll find the rocks. The rocks will cry out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to end my message now because... It's a lot to this here, and I'll come back. I'm going to hit you again with another video about domestic violence. Come out while you can, my friend. God will help you. God will help you. Call somebody you can trust. God will send an angel there for you, <laughs> if you're serious about it. I pray for the family that the lost loved ones. I'm praying to God Will, bless, will help you guys through this here grieving process. Until the next time, be blessed, my sisters. Be blessed, my brothers. I love you in the Lord. Jesus love you more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen.